Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about stream order and how we use that to classify streams and rivers. You're going to want to have your journal out and accessible as you will need to write a few things in it during this presentation. First, I just want you all to discuss what some differences are that you see between these two pictures. What differences do you see when you look at the stream on the upper left versus the stream on the lower right? I'm going to ask Mrs. Young to pause this recording so that you all can take a second to discuss what some differences are that you notice. Okay. Hopefully you came up with some good differences. But you might have said something like, this stream is thinner or not as wide as this one. You might have said, you might have noticed that this one looks like it has a much more rocky bottom than this one does. Um, some other things you might have noticed, that this one looks like it's flowing a little bit more quickly around the rocks, you see some rapids, whereas this one is more calm. Those are all great observations. You might have come up with some others too. We'll discuss more later. When you're classifying a stream, there are two rules to remember. It doesn't follow regular math, so make sure you pay attention. When two streams of the same number come together, you increase the stream order by one. For instance, when a one and a one come together, it makes a two. That's what you might expect. But when a two and a two come together, it makes a three. So anytime you have two streams of the same order coming together, you increase the number by one. Notice here, a three and a three coming together make a four. So that is the first rule. These two rules, by the way, you should write down in your journal. Stream classification, these two rules, it's very important. The second rule is when two streams of different numbers come together, you just take the higher number. It doesn't increase the stream order. So, for instance, when this 2 and this 1 come together, the stream just stays a 2. When this 1 flows into this 3, it still stays a 3. When this 2 flows into this 4, it stays a 4. So anytime that you have a lower number stream coming in, to a higher number stream, you just take the higher number. So again, two of the same number streams coming together, you increase it, and a lower number coming into a higher number doesn't change. So the way that you get these stream classifications, you always start with the edges are always classified as class one streams. That's gonna be where the stream is coming out of the mountains, or maybe where it's being fed by groundwater. So that's kind of the beginning of the stream. So those always start at one. And then you use the way that the stream flows to figure out what the rest of the numbers are. Now, I want you to take a second and remember those two pictures. This stream and this stream are actually the same stream, but at two different locations. These are both the Potomac River, but this one's up near where it starts, up in the mountains, and this picture shows where it's almost about to empty into the Chesapeake Bay, which is about where we live. I want you to take the slide that Mrs. Young is passing out to you, and right now with your group, I want you to take guesses. As you increase the stream order, meaning as you go from here to here, what happens to all of these different factors? So take a second with your group. I'm going to ask again to pause this recording. 
Take a second with your group and just make guesses. What do you think is going to happen to all of these things? Okay, hopefully you've all made some guesses as to what you think is going to happen as you increase the stream order. So first we have the speed. As you can see from this picture, it looks like the stream's flowing very rapidly over the rocks, creating some rapids. In this one, it's flowing a little slower. So the speed decreases. The width, as you go from a lower order stream to a higher order stream, you can see that you can see both banks in this picture, whereas this picture, it's much wider to get across. So the width increases. Temperature of the water. In this stream, the lower order stream, you have much faster flowing river waters, a lot shallower, and usually it's closer to the source of the stream, which could be cold mountain water or snow melt or groundwater spring. All of those sources are usually much colder. So once it gets from the lower stream order to the higher stream order, the temperature increases. So it's a much lower temperature when it's starting, much colder water. And then by the time that it gets to the end of its, of its streamway um, at a higher stream order, it usually increases and is much hotter. The sediment load, that's how much sediment it's carrying. It's going to be lower sediment here, and then as you get up to a higher stream order, there's going to be more sediment. So the sediment load increases. And that's just because you've got the sediment from all those little streams coming in to the big stream. And so at the end, the big stream is carrying a lot more sediment. This you can think of as true for the Mississippi River, for instance. It has a whole bunch of tributaries that are all feeding into it and giving it sediment. So by the time that you get to the bottom, to the delta, you've got a high sediment load before it reaches the Gulf of Mexico. The phosphate and the nitrogen also increase because, again, you've got any phosphate or nitrogen in this stream plus any phosphate or nitrogen in all the other tributaries all flowing in to the bigger stream. So the one with the larger stream order has more phosphate and nitrogen. The oxygen, on the other hand, decreases. This happens because in the beginning of the stream, again, the temperature is lower, it's much faster flowing, it creates rapids, it's much shallower, so the oxygen is able to dissolve into the water much more quickly. Whereas in the higher stream order, it's usually moving slower, a higher temperature, it's deeper. All these things make it so that it cannot hold as much oxygen. So the oxygen load decreases. The turbidity. If you remember, that is the amount of algae and sediment in the water. Since we already talked about sediment, you probably know the turbidity increases. So that means you'd get a higher secchi disc reading in a stream like this and a lower secchi disc reading in a stream like this. And the amount of pollutants increases. Also because of the same reason, you get all these streams coming into the bigger stream. So any pollutants that were in any of the tributaries end up in the bigger stream. The other thing that happens, which you can see in this picture, is that it changes from a rocky bottom to a muddy bottom. So Usually you have rocky bottom streams up the mountains, and then by the time it gets down, like where we have by the Chesapeake Bay, the James River, the York River, the Potomac River, if you can picture them, they're all muddy bottom now. And that's just because you have a lot more sediment that has been deposited over time. Hopefully you all did pretty well with your discussion and your guesses. Make sure you have the correct answers down on that slide, and that slide can go into your binder as notes. Now you're going to practice doing a stream order classification, and uh, Mrs. Young will have that worksheet for you. That worksheet should go in your folder when you're done. Thanks, guys. See you on Wednesday.